All of this, a thousandfold and colorful, had always been there. Always the sun and the moon had shone. Always rivers had roared and bees had buzzed. But in former times, all of this had been nothing more to Siddhartha than a fleeting, deceptive veil before his eyes, looked upon in distrust, destined to be penetrated and destroyed by thought, since it was not the essential existence, since this essence lay beyond, on the other side of the visible. But now, his liberated eyes stayed on this side. He saw and became aware of the visible, sought to be at home in this world, did not search for the true essence, did not aim at a world beyond. Beautiful was this world, looking at it thus, without searching, thus simply, thus childlike. Beautiful were the moon and the stars, beautiful was the stream and the banks, the forest and the rocks, the goat and the gold beetle, the flower and the butterfly. Beautiful and lovely it was, thus to walk through the world, thus childlike, thus awoken, thus open to what is near, thus without distrust. India, 6th century BCE, the confluence of the already pre-existing and steady stream of Hinduism and the dawning inception of Buddhism and Jainism. A majority of Indians at the time lived by the Rig Veda and the Upanishads, venerating many gods and goddesses. Brahma, the god of creation, considered the highest of all the deities. At this time, many followers believed that the outward portrayals of faith, such as sacrifices and ceremonies, were merely ritualistic and superficial, substituting for substance and distracting from the core of Hinduism's values. One of these believers was Siddhartha Gautama, who left his luxurious palace seeking enlightenment, eventually becoming the Buddha to preach the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path. Hermann Hesse was compelled to capture the essence of this dynamic time period with his novel, Siddhartha. Hesse, born in Kalf, Germany, was interested in the East due to his parents' missionary work in India. However, rather than bringing Western ideals to India, he created a work of Eastern philosophy to present to the Western world. Hesse's story follows Siddhartha, not Siddhartha Gautama, but Siddhartha, the son of a Brahmin, which is the wealthiest caste, reflective of the god of creation, Brahma. Siddhartha is a model son, praised by his father, his peers, his teachers, and most of all, his best friend, Govinda. Siddhartha is lauded for his determination and will for knowledge. However, Siddhartha feels dissatisfied, concluding that he can learn no more from his teachers and mentors. Thus, he decides to live in the forest and become an ascetic, a samana, fasting and enduring physical torture to dispel all dependencies and needs, stating, Once every desire and every urge was silent in the heart, then the ultimate part of me had to awake, the innermost of my being, which is no longer myself, the great secret. Siddhartha, with Govinda by his side, practices the art of escaping himself, shifting into other animals' bodies, but he finds himself at the end of each cycle perpetually returning back to himself. He recognizes the practice as fruitless, and thus, once he hears rumors of the Buddha, the enlightened one, after three years, he resolves to leave the Samanas. Govinda and Siddhartha hear the Buddha speak at Jatavana Grove, and Govinda decides to join him as a follower, leaving Siddhartha. Siddhartha speaks with the Buddha and acknowledges that there are no flaws in the Buddha's teachings, but he believes that enlightenment cannot be taught but must be experienced. Therefore, following the Buddha would be equally fruitless as his asceticism. Siddhartha is taken by a ferryman into the city and meets a courtesan, Kamala, who helps him get a job with a merchant. Siddhartha becomes extremely wealthy and learns the art of love from Kamala, losing touch with his days as a samana, beginning to gamble and drink. After falling asleep drunk, he has a telling dream where he finds Kamala's songbird dead and he throws it out of the window. He leaves the next morning and Kamala releases her songbird from its cage. He wanders into the forest, attempting to drown himself in the river, but he becomes entranced by the river, dispelling all of his materialistic preoccupations. He goes to the ferryman, Vasudeva, and becomes his apprentice, learning to listen to the river. Siddhartha learns from the river that the river is always in the present, everywhere at once, upstream and downstream, reflective of life. His existence as a young boy and his current state are the same, 
both presence in his current being. After years learning from the river, Kamala and her son enter the forest to see the Buddha on his deathbed. Kamala is bitten by a snake, and Vasudeva and Siddhartha find her, attempting to save her, but she dies. Siddhartha, in realizing that the young boy with her is his son, wants to take him in, but his son, accustomed to wealth, escapes. In his despair, Siddhartha finds comfort and a sense of unity in the river. Finally, after learning his many lessons from the river, Vasudeva teaches him one last lesson. Vasudeva takes him out to the river, and Siddhartha learns that the whole world is a continuum, a chain of cause and effect. Everything is connected. Siddhartha realizes that Vasudeva is, in fact, God. And when Vasudeva touches his shoulder, Siddhartha's soul is transported into unity with the world. Vasudeva now leaves, merging with the forest, Siddhartha becoming the new ferryman. Govinda, long separated from his friend, returns to Siddhartha untouched by Nirvana. Siddhartha tells Govinda that he has failed because he oriented himself towards a specific goal. By seeking for knowledge, he has avoided enlightenment. He recites that knowledge can be taught, but not wisdom. Enlightenment must be individually found and experienced. Govinda kisses Siddhartha's forehead and sees a stream of faces and experiences. In the final face, the Buddha. Siddhartha has transformed into the Buddha, and Govinda bows at his feet as Siddhartha rises, finally achieving enlightenment. Hermann Hesse received the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1946 and, shortly after, published Siddhartha in 1951, garnering him much critical acclaim, his most popular novel by far. Hesse, through the novel Siddhartha, aims to present a philosophical perspective that shows humanity's deviance from true religious focus. Initially, Hesse presents Siddhartha as the poster child for Indian society at the time, constantly seeking knowledge. However, Siddhartha eventually comes to view seeking knowledge as only a distraction, much like the ritual sacrifices and ceremonies practiced by the upper class in India. He states, I searched Atman, I searched Brahman, I was willing to dissect myself and peel of all of its layers to find the core of all peels in its unknown interior, the Atman, life, the divine parts, the ultimate part, but I have lost myself in the process. Hesse emphasizes this through the foil relationship between Siddhartha and Govinda. Siddhartha, who follows his own path in search for nothing, reaches enlightenment, whereas Govinda, who deliberately seeks for religious validation, never reaches nirvana. Hesse further emphasizes the importance of self-reliance in religion through the parallels and juxtaposition of Siddhartha's character in Siddhartha Gautama. Hesse alludes to the Buddha, as Siddhartha has the same name, foreshadowing the protagonist's own enlightenment. Both individuals are of high social rank, though Siddhartha is in a higher caste. Both resolve to leave their fathers to become ascetics while sitting under a tree and meditating, though Siddhartha's parting is much more amicable, and both leave the samanas to go on their own journey. Though there are many parallels between their lives, there are slight juxtaposing differences, proving Hesse's point that, Though Siddhartha is destined for enlightenment due to his symbolic connection with the Buddha, his life path is still slightly different, as enlightenment cannot be reached by following, but by experiencing life in your own way. Hesse states, All knowledge of the wisest ones had been collected here, as honey collected by bees. Enlightenment, which lay here collected and preserved by innumerable generations of wise Brahmins. But where were the Brahmins who had succeeded in not just knowing this deepest of all knowledge, but also to live it. Hesse uses a simile comparing the Brahmins to bees as they are merely collecting knowledge rather than acquiring it from within and experiencing it, proven to be futile. Hesse continues the extended simile, describing the Buddha's followers as bees in their yellow robes, showing that, just like the Brahmins, their efforts in learning to become enlightened are in vain. Finally, Hesse uses symbolism of Vasudeva, the ferryman, in order to show that following a doctrine will not lead to enlightenment. Vasudeva is foreshadowed to be a god, as his name, Vasudeva, is reflective of the Vedas that Indians live by, symbolizing Hesse's perspective that true holiness and enlightenment cannot be extracted from holy books, but from experience. Vasudeva, a physical embodiment of that idea. Ultimately, Siddhartha's journey culminated in this final epiphany. Hesse, through his award-winning piece, 
presents the idea that life should not be investigated, dissected, or explained, and life's meaning should not be sought after. Rather, life should simply be seen and appreciated as it is, this lesson only learned by experiencing life's beauty firsthand, the ultimate lesson.